manage them. It is how you manage them that is going to be critical. Yeah. 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 As as you as as you were asking earlier, how do we define? Yeah, so we were talk we spent a lot of time just now talking about the emotional adultery yeah, yeah. and about the adultery that can take that can take place in cyberspace space because of you know the digital environment. I, I, I was I was just so. about to ask you a question um mm -hmm. relating to the same um being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We we I said earlier that men because of the way how they were socialized, mm -hmm. they can fall prey to mm -hmm. being that same type of action they were seeing, mm -hmm. being that same type of person. Mm -hmm. Can the, the female, because of um, past experiences like, like abuse, yeah. cause her to be prey as well? She become vulnerable and give well, herself? Yeah, anything can happen. I mean, if, um, if a woman doesn't feel beautiful, or if her partner doesn't make her feel beautiful, or for some reason it might not be the partner, it might be herself. Yeah. She doesn't feel beautiful in herself, or mm -hmm. she doesn't feel valued in herself, and she meets someone who makes her feel that way, yeah. you know, um, who tells her things she hasn't heard before, then she can become vulnerable, okay. you know? Or um, in a reverse of that, a woman, a, a woman who is all right, a woman who's insecure, a woman who is broken, who has been traumatized, who has been abused, who has been um, trapped in a certain type of behavior, who okay. feels that sex is the answer to everything, yeah. can begin to always see herself in sexual terms. She validates herself through sex. And if you validate yourself through sex, and you validate yourself not only through sex, but through sexual variety, in the, in the sense that if, you, if you've lived a life where you've had many partners, and the fact that you've had many partners have made you feel validated as a woman. The more enticing you are to more men, the more sexy you feel and the more valuable you feel. So if you walk down the road and 20 men turn their heads, you feel really strong and powerful as a woman. It doesn't mean you want those men to touch you. It doesn't mean you want to have sex with those men. But it means that knowing that you have that power makes you feel powerful. Um, you could be also vulnerable. Um, so, I mean, there, there are so many different nuances as to why people get into cheating, mm -hmm. and I'm not using any of those nuances or to any validate. of those descriptions yeah. to validate cheating, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, cheating is a choice. Mm -hmm. It is a choice. Um, people move gradually into it. People move suddenly into I, it. I, because I, we, I, we've been only talking about the gradual kind, you know, we've been talking about yeah, I, was, I was just about to say, I am so glad you mentioned <laughs> that, because... People don't just take off their clothes. Exactly, yeah. you're in my brain no. because I was going to say the same thing. No. It takes time to yeah. take off those underwear, take off those clothes, yeah. and even get into a place where you can cheat yes. without being being discovered. That's right. It takes plotting and planning. Yeah, yeah, you know, you all yeah. have to plan how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to plan to do it in the same house that your partner might live in before they get home. You might plan to do it somewhere else, to go somewhere else. else. Yeah. You know, you have to plan, you have to strategize. So... There isn't anything, it isn't always a, something that, you know, just happens. It That's doesn't right. just That's happen, right. That's right. right? And even in instances where it may just happen, I mean, I think those are very, 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 very rare, where somebody might have, say, for example, they may have gone, traveled overseas to a conference, and their wife isn't there, their husband isn't there, they meet somebody, they feel attracted to them, and they go to sleep with them. You know, you hear about these things, you might have seen it in the movie, I don't know how widespread it is, but anything can happen. And, 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 you know, obviously, infidelity, that emotional kind that we spoke about earlier, we spoke about it as a doorway that could lead to sexual infidelity. But emotional uh, um, infidelity can also remain purely emotional. Mm -hmm. There may be people, there are people who rationalize, I'm telling you, there are people who rationalize and say, I have never slept with her, so I haven't done anything wrong. I have never had sex with him, so I haven't done anything wrong, even though the relationship is inappropriate. And that is just as wrong. It is just as wrong to me. You may not agree with me, but it is just as wrong to me as if you have slept with the person. Because if you are in an entanglement, let me put it that way, <laughs> you know, right. 
It might not yet be sexual, but this person means so much to you that you can't give them up for your partner. It is a transgression. It is a transgression. Yeah. You know, if you, you can't sleep at night unless you talk to them. Mm -hmm. Every morning you got to speak to them. You got to mm -hmm. be messaging them all during the day at work and you have to be connecting with them and you have to hear them. You know when you hear them how they make you feel and mm -hmm. you're thinking about them all the time. You haven't had sex with them, but you're doing something wrong. You are involved in emo an emotional that's entanglement. Right. That's right. That's right. It may or may not lead to sex, but it does. At the same time, it is still as long as it's still a transgression. Yeah, it's still a transgression, right? So, uh, as as you find as you find something like that is about to occur, mm -hmm. that's your red flag. Yes. So you you immediately say yeah. no. I yeah. am not going yes. any further. Yes. Let's break this. Yes. No. Let's Excellent. get let, let me get my head in yes. the right direction. Yes. Right. Yeah. If not, you're going to fall prey. You're yeah. going to be the victim. To what you don't want that's to be. right be because the thing about oneness is oneness is not only sexual right we hear of the two becoming one we immediately think of a penis and a vagina going into each other we think of the baby you know the bodies coming together mm -hmm. and they're one that is the truth that is actually the physical evidence, evidence. Yeah. of oneness you know we think of we, we speak of the marriage being consummated mm -hmm. and the oneness happening at the level of the physical but oneness is also spiritual Very. and Spiritual oneness also takes place at the level of emotions. People talk about soul ties. Yes, sex also solidifies that because sex itself is also spiritual. So there's a lot of dovetailing in there and a lot of connection in there in mm -hmm. terms of how we can, uh, a lot of diversity in there, um, excuse me, in terms of how we can become connected to people. Yeah. We can become connected to people emotionally. We can become connected to people sexually. And when we become connected to people sexually, we become connected to them emotionally and spiritually. You get that? Let me say that again. We can become connected to people emotionally. We can become connected to people sexually. When we become connected to people sexually, we become connected to them emotionally Emotion. and, and spiritually. That's right. Because sex is not just a physical act. That's I don't right. care what you have been sold. The idea of casual sex is a misnomer. It does sure. not exist. Mm -hmm. Sex can never be casual. The DNA of sex spells spirit-to-spirit -spirit connection. The Bible says that when a man has sex with a harlot he or he right. has sex with a prostitute, he becomes one with her. So the same way you become one with your That's partner spiritual. that you love, that you in love with and you feel all, mm, when you have sex with a prostitute that you don't know, you become one of them too. Because you're fragmenting yourself. So when you have sex with more than one person, you are you are splintering yourselves. Every time you go with somebody else, you splinter yourself. That's right. You are becoming fragmented, broken, because you are joining yourself with somebody. Then you're leaving them, you're joining yourself with somebody else. And you're joined to a, a spouse. You know, so it's, it's a lot of fragmentation happening. Yeah. And that is why people don't feel whole. And that is why people feel as if something is... You know the narrative that Jada spun about it not being a transgression. She wasn't languaging it in terms of it being a transgression. She said, well, I, I didn't use that word. Will is the one who used the word. And she said, well, I, I didn't really see it as a transgression. She spoke about it as an entanglement. Mm -hmm. He spoke about it as an interaction. But really and truly, if it wasn't a transgression, mm -hmm. why bring it to the table in the that's first place? Right, right. There would have been no need to have the discussion. You know, because so every, which everything that, would have been hunky-dory. Which means that some level of hurt is taking place. And some level, and of, some denial, level of denial. Some level yeah. of denial yeah. in terms of the seriousness of it. And, and, the, the, depth, and the depth of yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, she spoke about the need for healing. She did speak about that. So yeah. she didn't deny healing. She spoke about the fact that they had been through some process of healing. That it had happened a while ago. I think they said four years ago. And they had worked through a lot of stuff and so on. So there was a lot of... Um, there was a lot to me that was unresolved in the conversation because at one point she's saying, I didn't call it a transgression. She labeled it an entanglement. He labeled it an interaction. Neither of them used the word cheating or unfaithfulness or infidelity or adultery as if they were, you know, stepping on on, 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 on glass. They didn't want to, yeah, on eggshells. Yeah, they didn't want to, to get punched. You know, they were being very cautious in terms of how they languaged it. But yet at the same time, they spoke about having to go through all of this healing and all this stuff that happened over the four years before they made that decision to come together. So I think, I, I actually think, just from seeing that one interaction, I don't know anything about them, 
but just from seeing that interaction, I actually think that there's a lot that they still have to work yeah, through. Yeah, I still right. think that there's a lot that isn't resolved. I think that you know, after sounding really strained, you know, and there's a lot that was left unsaid, you know. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to bring it to the public. They chose mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. you know, but that's just my take on it, you know. But um, to, to spin back to what we are talking about as, as it applies to us, because, you know, it's not about trying to get into anybody's business, but they're human beings. We're yeah. human beings. We all go through these these, these mm-hmm. things. And as far as I, I'm concerned, if you put something up there in the public domain, we can learn from it. We can take it. We can talk about it. We can apply it. We can not apply it. We can see where it's where, where it can help us. Where it can help us. Where it can mm-hmm. cause us to think differently and actually grow. So as well. can cheating be a blessing? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Can it be a blessing? Um, <laughs> I have a book. I should have brought it on air before we started. Um, how my husband's affair did something to my marriage. I can't remember, but it, it was a very popular book um, written by a, a woman who, whose husband cheated on her. And, you know, she wrote this book and, and she, she, her she made a big thing about it. She was on Oprah. She, and she has a whole ministry out of it and, and so on about how, you know, the lies were turned around because her husband cheated on her. I read the whole book. I, I don't know that I buy everything that she's saying. I understand what she's saying. I don't know that I can say it myself. You know, but I guess what she was saying is that at the end of the day, because they cheat, because he cheated on her, she didn't cheat, because he cheated on her, and he, he really turned his life around. You know, he accepted so full. Yeah, he he accepted responsibility. She was not the one. She went through all the the, the, the trauma mm. and the depression and the, the disengagement, the hurt, the ostracism from family and friends. So she really suffered. But at the end of the day, he was the body that that's made the somebody decision. Somebody just put it up. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. That's right. Very, very, very good. That's really? the book. My Husband's Affair Became the Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me by Anne Birch. I have that book. Yeah, that's it. My, my, my Husband's Affair Became the Best Thing That Happened to Me. He was the person to turn it around. He was the person to make that decision. And he was very penitent. He was very, very, very sorry. He admitted to his wrong. He accepted responsibility. He did not seek to blame it on her. You know, and I think that that is what perhaps caused it to become a blessing. blessing. The fact that he accepted responsibility. And in terms of negotiating, uh, 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 the, the act of cheating in a relationship, which was our overarching question, how should couples treat to the issue or the question of infidelity or adultery, that was our overarching general question at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you can really only deal with it in the right way if you are honest. If you are honest, it must begin with honesty. If you're not honest, that's my take. If you're not honest and you're holding something back, you're not telling your partner the full story and you're not honest with yourself as well. So it's a two-way thing to me. Mm-hmm. The infidel, the one who has cheated, needs to be honest with your partner, fully honest, bring up everything, go and hide back anything, and then they need to be honest with themselves. It's just like, it's just like um, forgiveness. Yes. That, that you can ask for forgiveness, mm-hmm. but if you yourself do not forgive or you could forgive mm. and if you yourself do not mm. forgive yourself yes it creates a problem, a problem. that's right yeah. that's right yeah. so it, it, it really calls for honesty yeah. um honesty you, you have to bring it to the table like, i am not one that believes if you've cheated you can't keep it to yourself and expect that the relationship is still going to thrive that cannot work so therefore then can we also say that it can be a blessing if those two persons come apart as well. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Obviously. Because, the, the, because the good thing that Jada said is that she and August were no longer speaking, that, okay. they, that they had ended the, the you know, there was no friendship there's anymore. No friendship and, anymore. And I pray right. that that's what, that is what is maintained. So it, it would be a blessing to the relationship yes. presently. Yes, yes, right. yes. Mm-hmm. Whatever connections you've had with someone inappropriately, you must bring them to a total halt. Yeah. You must, yeah. once cheating has occurred, you must bring that to an end. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that is a way of letting your partner know as well how serious you are, how serious you are about change, how serious you are about turning things around for yourself. Yeah. You know, so 
honesty is required. Honesty with the part with your partner in terms of telling them what has happened. Honesty with yourself. Unpacking that to them. Mm -hmm. Telling them what they need to know. Don't hide anything from them. If they want to know details, give them the details. If they may not want to know the details, well, fine. But if they ask, be willing to tell them. And be honest with yourself. Yes. Don't hide what you have done. Don't hide the seriousness of what you have done. Don't just call it something else because you don't want to look bad. So you're not just going to say, oh, I, I got a bit of entangled with the guy. You know, say what it was. Say what you did, you know. And, and, and please do see it as a transgression. It is a transgression. This is wrong. Yeah. You know, if you have been committed to someone. Now, some people might say, well, yeah, they were separated. So it was okay. She cheated. You know, they weren't together. Blah, blah, blah. Well, the marriage wasn't ended. You know, separation is that. It's a separation. It's not an end. Right. Uh, if you want to go and have another relationship, well, get divorced. You know, take your relationship to the next step. Get divorced so you're totally free. That's a different ballgame. Mm -hmm. But if you're married and separated, you're still married right um and it's not to say you know they were separated for a very 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 long time you know it was that long right so all of those mitigating certain circumstances can color how we see this but honesty is required mm -hmm. honesty with the self honesty with the partner and then a willingness to sever all ties mm -hmm. yeah um, so I think that that kind of answers that last that question. Last question. Yeah. Should we should we always cheat and, and tell? tell? Yeah, I think we should tell. Yeah. We need to tell. Yeah. We have yeah. to be honest. The the, the, the the old saying is from the old folk mm -hmm. is that what you do not know can't hurt you. Can't hurt you. Mm -hmm. That is not true at all. What it's you don't know myth. can very well hurt you. Very well hurt you. Because what you don't know is that if your partner has cheated and he or she has not told you, what you are getting is an eighth of a man. That's right. Or an eighth of yeah, a woman. You're not getting everything. Or a quarter. Yeah. Or three quarters. Or five, five eighths. You're mm -hmm. getting some fraction yeah. of your spouse. Yeah, you're not right. getting your full spouse if your spouse is lying to you even if you don't know yeah. right so it's not a case of what you don't know can't hurt you what you don't know is hurting it's you. hurting you yeah. it is damaging your relationship right. you are being given the dregs of your relationship you know when you drink your tea and you see all the grounds in the bottom that's what you're getting you're not getting the full monty you know and you deserve that you deserve to have the full monty you deserve to have your full man you deserve yeah. to have your full woman yeah. you don't want a half of them you don't want a quarter of them and if piece of them belong to somebody else or even if they're not with that person anymore, but they've kept it a secret because it's a secret secret. It's something that they really want to hold on to, either because they want to deceive you or because they're still holding feelings for the person. Mm -hmm. You don't know which it is. If you don't know, you might not know, but it's still hurting the relationship. That's right. That's right. And, and very often we've heard of women, particularly because we're so intuitive, We've heard of women saying, I just knew something was wrong. I couldn't put my finger on what it was. But I sensed that something wasn't right in this relationship. I sensed that there was a separation somewhere. I can't put my hand on what it was. I, I just felt a suspicion. I felt something wasn't right. There's no evidence. She's never seen him with a man. Mm -hmm. And I've heard men say that they have also sensed when their wives were cheating. They have never seen the person cheating. They've never even seen the partner. They have no evidence of a partner. Right. But in their heart, in their spirit, right. yeah. they can feel that they don't have their entire partner. They can feel that there's a separation between them and the partner, that the partner isn't quite with them all the way, and it's because there's an interference in the relationship from someone else. And, you know, you know it, is, it, is, it is something that we attribute to a lot of women, mm -hmm. this thing, intuition. Yes. That how, when she says, listen, I think you should be careful with such and such. Yes. And as a man, we do not like to know, well, hey, mm -hmm. we don't have everything together. I have everything together. Yeah, I'm under control, man. I'm under control, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, and She's just a friend from yeah, work. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We're just talking. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the thing is, the woman can see mm -hmm. as a woman mm -hmm. What's happening there? We women are extremely perceptive. I think, right? I think, I think, I think that that part of of a man is what God took out 
<laughs> and put it in the living. <laughs> well, I don't know. But I know that we have a very good handle on right. intuition. intuition. Yeah, uh, definitely. Men are intuitive as well. Or yeah. men can be, or they can be trained to be intuitive. But yeah. they might think women. And men, I think, men I think with science. Sense. Yeah, men with yeah sense I think science does confirm happen. it as well that women do have this extra set of intuition. Uh, it might be linked to our hormones. Um, and they, I think there are some times of the month where we're even actually more intuitive than other times, right? So it might be hormonally linked, but we do have this sense of when something is wrong in the relationship, even if we can't put our hands on what it is. And sometimes that instinct is what causes us to question our spouse. What's wrong, honey? Is there yeah. something that you're telling me? Yeah. Is there something that you're doing that I need to know? Is there something I have done to you to hurt you? I just feel as if we're not connected. I just feel as if we're drifting apart. And all that time he's sleeping with someone else, you know. So sometimes we need to follow that intuition and allow it to lead to probing. And hopefully that will maybe, you know, bring about the scenario where your partner will tell you, well, yes, I have done something wrong. But many times women do ask and men deny it. Men do ask and women deny it because it goes both ways. People lie and they don't share, they don't yeah. tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. But that truth is needed if there's going to be healing, as Sharon yeah, saying, was saying. The yeah, spiritual right. connect is broken. That is how we know that something is not quite right. Excellent, Sharon. That is very true. The spiritual connection becomes broken between the man and the woman. And, and that becomes the evidence that something isn't right mm -hmm. and that it needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You know, does one good or bad horn, because I don't think a, a horn can be bad, can be good. So that was just said <laughs> facetiously. Does one horn deserve another? Obviously, no. no. Um, and that leads us to the question of forgiveness. Um, but before we get there, and that's going to be our wrap-up point. Um, at a very human, maybe primal level, the desire to get back at someone yes. can be experienced by some of us. It can be going through. It, it can go it through can, your head. It can go through your but mind. But it doesn't mean that, that you have to act right, on it. Right, yeah. right, right. Some right. people might feel, yeah, he did it to me. She did it to me. I can do it back to them. You know, uh, he harmed me. I can harm her. You know, that kind of thing. You know, I can, I can do it back. Yeah. You know, that, and and we're going to be on level terms. We're going to be on level. Yeah, we're going to be level. Yeah. Um, some people might have that feeling. Some people won't. You know, I, I, I can't imagine feeling that way, but some people might. Um, some people might want to take it out in another way. Yeah, uh, right. They might not necessarily go and harm their partner, but they might go and do something. They might go and buy a car. <laughs> they might go and take off a lot of money off the bank. They might go on a secret trip. They might do something to get back at their partner in an attempt to seize the power that they feel they have lost. Uh, I can only, you know, something like cheating has got to be extremely devastating to, to a relationship. And if you've been cheated on, if you've experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and, um, you know, that sense of feeling totally disempowered, feeling as if, you are not worth anything, questioning your attractiveness, questioning your your sexuality, questioning, you know, who your yourself, yeah. questioning what you had before with your partner. Is it was it all a lie? You know, was the whole thing a lie? You know, did I did I did I know him? Did I know her? You know, who was who was I fooled? Was I tricked? All of those questions can come up and it can be an extremely stressful time. And uh, the, the, the desire to strike out and strike back and to hurt mm -hmm. is understood. I understand it. And God understands it. You know, we, we want to lash out because we've been hurt. We want to do them back something. Mm -hmm. But if we, and, and let me say this. I am not judging you in the sense of condemning you if you feel that way. I understand that you might feel that way. What I'm going to say to, however, is don't dwell in that, that place forever. Mm -hmm. Don't dwell there. I, in, in describing what forgiveness looks like, especially after something as serious as infidelity, we're going to go into this now. I often say um, forgiveness is a process, not an event. Mm -hmm. I know for Christ it's an event <laughs> because he forgives us immediately. He casts our sin in the sea of forgetfulness. He has the power. He's God himself. He's able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, he requires that of us. But as human beings, we have to walk through the process. And very often that process involves allowing ourselves to grieve what we have lost. Take up your cross. Allowing ourselves to get angry. Mm -hmm. You know, don't pretend that what he did didn't hurt you. Yeah. 
Don't pretend that it was just an entanglement. That's right. Don't pretend that there was it, no it, it, it was just an interaction. Don't don't act as if that person didn't transgress and do something mm -hmm. most terrible mm -hmm. because they That's did. That's right, they did. If you did it, you did. It yeah. is something horrible. It is yeah. something serious. Mm -hmm. Own it. That's the first that's, step. That's a good point. Own, Own it. it. Yeah. Own it. Yes, I messed up. I messed up big time. Yeah. I did wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it was uncom. It was unbecoming of me. Own it. Don't don't trivialize it. Don't yeah. use words to make it smell nice mm -hmm. and flowery. And, you know, as I said at the beginning, a rose by any other name is still a rose. It is what it is. Don't try to make it into something. Oh, you know, I was I was getting in touch with myself, and you know, I was becoming stronger. I just wanted to feel so good, and I watched Jada do all of that, but. She didn't admit that it was a transgression. Still and she herself said it. She said, yeah. I'm not going to use that language. And I think that that itself will stunt her growth. I yeah. think that yeah. itself yeah. Yeah. will be a roadblock to her not growing and maximizing what she could out of that entire situation. I think a part of growth comes first from owning it. Infidelity Therefore, is that serious. You're, you're married. You're not... You know, this whole thing about, oh, it's my body, can do what I want. You know, when you are, if you want to do what you want with your body, don't get married. Therefore, therefore, can we say then that if you do not admit to your wrong, if you do not admit to mm -hmm. your transgression, the possibility arises that in in your head, in your heart of hearts, mm -hmm. you believe it can happen it again. Can, I was going to say that, you know, Gabriel, it can happen again. Yeah. You know, you can actually expose yourself to it happening again yes. because you have not... Point. Allowed yourself to you've been you voiced haven't it. you haven't been honest with yourself yeah. you haven't voiced it you haven't owned it and yeah. as a result you are going to end up weakened by it yeah. you are it's going to weaken you um, not necessarily weaken you um, sexually I'm not looking at it from that perspective I'm looking at it in terms of who you are your sense of who you are yeah. and, and and that is what can make you vulnerable to doing it again because you're always excusing yourself yeah. you're excusing your behavior and and, and in, uh, instead of excusing your behavior own it for what it is label it be honest with it say this i cheated yeah. i was unfaithful yeah. this was infidelity this was adultery it wasn't just an entanglement it just wasn't an interaction it 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 hit at the heart or the covenant of what marriage is supposed to be, mm -hmm. which is one man, one woman committed to each other for life. You know, I did something wrong and I need to own it. I need to own up to it. Uh, I need to say I'm sorry. And I would have loved to have heard her say that because to have brought it publicly into the domain that they did, they didn't have to. It happened four years ago. I would have loved to her still to have said, well, I am sorry. Yeah. You know, that would have been so powerful. That would have taught people so much just by saying that and I, I think she failed to say it. she failed to communicate that she was sorry even if she didn't use those words yeah, there right. was no sense that she was really sorry because she was talking about all the wonderful things that mm. it did to her she, she, she was making herself look good yes yeah. Right? yeah she she I think there was still that mask mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and whereas you could see with him there was so much hurt still inside of him. Yeah, he looked that Knowing that he, he had not found release mm -hmm. as yet. And I think that's why he kept trying to get her to say something. Yes. You know, because he kept saying, what did you do, Jada? You know, um, and, uh, but anyhow. <laughs> but the point is, if you're going to move on to forgive your partner and experience forgiveness in the relationship, in the as, relationship. A, as a bi-directional yeah. thing, because... For forgiveness to really repair a relationship, to allow that relationship to move on, it can't just be, oh, I am forgiving you. And, you know, I'm forgiving you. I'm benevolent. I'm good. Mm. And I'm forgiving you're, you you're for the... Gone, I'm, for, I'm forgiving you for the wrong you have done. It isn't that. It is that it becomes a relationship experience yeah. where even though one person did the wrong, you know, you, you express it, you own it, you express how sorry you are, you ask forgiveness... And the individual who has been hurt, they are allowed to experience their emotions. Yeah. They're allowed to be angry. They're allowed to grieve. They're allowed to scream and throw things if that's what it entails. You know, it might also 
require well look if it's been something really serious and deep rooted in your relationship like a, a extra marker affair that went on for a very long time they might say well look i want to spend some time alone i want you to move out i want you to move out the bedroom i need some time by myself yeah. i need to regroup and you know that's okay and you have to be willing to allow them to go through that process if that is what is needed for you to salvage your relationship don't try to force forgiveness on someone they have to they be have willing to, yeah. to forgive you mm -hmm. so if you've been the person to do it wrong own it be penitent, admit and own it as a tra transgression. Say you're sorry, but understand that you don't have the power to control that other person. Yeah. They have to be willing to forgive you all by themselves. And you have to let them walk through the process. Let them walk through their own hurt. Let them scream. Let them cry. Let them disengage mm -hmm. if they need to. They might not want to sleep with you. They might want to touch them. Let them go through that process. Some people might say, well, how long should that be? It will be different lengths for different people depending on the seriousness of it, not seriousness, on the length of it, on the secrecy, the level of secrecy mm -hmm. that might have been involved, whether or not they found out or whether you confess, that also makes a big difference. Because mm -hmm. if somebody finds out something that they didn't expect or you came out and you told them, you know, if, if you can't come out and you tell them, I think that's better, it's better than for the relationship than in the long than run. To hear it. Or to hear it from someone, from else. someone else. Yeah. It's so all of those things yeah. factor into how individuals will end up forgiving and dealing with infidelity but it isn't something that we should try to force we have to allow people to walk through that process some people will need someone else to help them with it and that's yeah. why they will turn to a counselor they might turn to a pastor they might turn to a close friend someone who might who will be unbiased because yeah. you need someone who's going to listen to both sides of the story. Because whenever there's cheating, there are the two sides of the story. Yeah, right. I, you know, I am not here to bash Jada. I say she's evil, bah, 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 she did it. You know, adultery always has two sides. I'm not saying that that means that the person who was cheated on is at fault. Because if you chose to cheat, you chose to cheat. You didn't have to choose to cheat. That's, right. That's your choice. But at the end of the day, very often there's something going on in the relationship that perhaps the other person is not aware of, you know, there's some hurt, there's have nothing to do with you whatsoever, you know, it might just be totally on the inside of the person who you did, but I know in relationships to be what they are, I'm going to say that I like to know that even the other couple, the other part of the couple, the one who didn't cheat, is going to say, look, I'm willing to say that perhaps, you know, I did xyz when i shouldn't have or you know in some way i contributed to the demise of our relationship not to the cheating per se but i contributed to the breakdown yeah. in our relationship because i don't think you should accept or own that you caused your partner to cheat i don't believe in that either they chose to cheat that is their business that's their decision you know, you know that don't is, own it that is something that that is often forced on the other person. Yes, and it's wrong. You cause him to do you this me because do it. you did not You made me cheat. Yeah. You made yeah. me do no. You yeah. have to own it for yeah. yourself. Yeah. You did it. It's yeah. wrong. The other person can admit to, if it's the case, well, I did contribute, I to, contribute to the relationship breaking but still, down. Even even though but that, that is doesn't the case, mean you contributed you are the to person, the You are the person that unlocked that door yes. and went into it. That's right. That's yeah. right. But in terms of the forgiveness, forgiveness process now, as I said, you have to allow your partner to grieve, allow them to go through their emotions. Don't try to make them get rid of those yeah. emotions prematurely. It's not instant coffee. It's not instant coffee. It's going to take a while. Let them go through it. Let them experience the pain, experience the grief, and have conversations regularly. Yeah. Talk about what happened. Be willing to admit. Be, don't, don't hide up things. If they ask you all kinds of questions, meet every question with an answer. Be totally accountable to your partner. If you were clandestine, you were secretive, you were, you know, hiding up your phone, your phone was password, you gotta open everything now. Everything has to be exposed. Right. There can be no more secrets. If you want your partner to trust you, trust now has to be earned. If you want the relationship to continue on the journey, mm -hmm. trust must be earned. Trust must be earned. You have to be willing to expose your Keep everything out there and also be accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, let your partner know where you are all the time. If you said you're going to be here, be there. If you can't be there for some reason, call. Mm -hmm. Say, well, listen, I, I was supposed to be at work now. I was supposed to be here now, but 
you have that is the kind of accountability that has because you're what you're doing is saying to your partner i have nothing else to hide i am an open book does that mean that your marriage is going to be like that forever and ever i don't think so i think as time goes on and as you know you become settled and as the forgiveness becomes operational between the two of you then you're going to find that some of those strictures will probably be released a bit and, and you'll be able to to live perhaps more like you were living before where you just took things for granted take things for granted if you understand what i'm saying you know you you, you, know, you don't want to feel as if you're always under the microscope but at the same time you have to go through that process mm -hmm. until that healing has taken place in your partner where they can now feel more free with you mm -hmm. and they can trust you again and they you don't have to be questioning your every motive they're going to go through that time of ultimate of of, of, of suspicion of feeling suspicious at your every turn your every move and all of that is a part of the process but forgiveness then becomes a, a bi-directional thing where they have a part to play in in your healing and you have a part to play in their healing you know because you're honest you're open with each other you're spending time together you know um, new growth takes new place, growth takes place. Mm -hmm. and, and more importantly you're willing now to redefine your relationship mm -hmm. what are you going to do differently now than what you were doing before certainly you can't continue as you were before mm -hmm. before the cheating took place so now you have to carve out time for each other you know go together you know it doesn't have to be a money thing you know people feel oh i don't have the money for all this dating thing it doesn't have to be that you know, just spend time alone you know spend time it can be a fancy day it can be simple it can be at home it can be just by the beach or in driving for a walk whatever you want to do it fancy you want to do it simple but just take time out for each other make each other your priority yeah. so that there's no best friend there's no friend there's no one that comes between you mm -hmm. and your spouse you know um other people know that this is your partner mm -hmm. other people hear you say this is my husband this is my wife that is the language that you use you know um you, you, you don't hide them you're not ashamed of them mm -hmm. you're promoting them you're speaking you're affirming them openly to others so people know they have to respect you you know no woman is going to cross the boundary where you keep throwing the wife, the wife, the wife, the wife, yeah, right. you know, and, and, and you know how to shut it down. You know, if a woman is advancing in, in your corner, you shut her down. If a man is advancing in your corner, you shut him shut down. down. That's right. You know, you shut them down. You don't, you don't encourage it. You don't be flirtatious, you know, because all of those things are inappropriate behaviors, which open the door to infidelity. Yeah. yeah wonderful. Yeah. So we had a really interesting discussion tonight looking at this whole question of entanglement and uh, i am I'm, I'm praying that you can take something away from this discussion tonight um cheating happens mm -hmm. it is not good it shouldn't happen in the context of a marriage for sure where you have you know you've covenanted a committed, committed, a committed relationship, relationship but you know certainly when you have covenanted to each other it should not happen it happens and when it does you need to deal with it if you're not yet married certainly if you plan to get married and infidelity happens if you don't deal with it mm, you are going to be in for a very miserable relationship down the road if you're already married and it has occurred sweeping it under the rug will not help That's right. calling it by some other name cute name entanglement interaction whatever is not going to help on it it is a transgression repaint tell your partner you're sorry ask their forgiveness tell god you're sorry as well because you've also sinned against him mm -hmm. let them know that what you did was not right ask their forgiveness and then walk in what that um repaired relationship should look like in terms of mutual forgiveness between the two of you Excellent. um bring your partner along your side if you're the one who you know you're the one who didn't cheat um, you don't want to be making that person feel guilty all the time by keep bringing it up and you know pushing it at them all the time and you know crushing them with it yes you will want to get it out of your system and that should be allowed you need space to get it out you need space to discuss it you need space to bring it out into the open and your partner should be open to that even if he feels bad or she feels bad well, let them feel bad you know that's a consequence yeah. of what they did yeah. Yeah. and they have to put up with that don't take on their guilt don't feel that you are don't feel guilty because you are questioning them about the infidelity question them if you need to get it out of your system get all the information that you need and when you've gotten that information then work towards forgiving them
And um, if there's need for you to self-forgive as well, do that. That is so for both of you. If the individual who has cheated also needs to self-forgive, then that is also a requirement so that true healing can come to the relationship. If there's nothing else you take away tonight, take away the, the fact that you can only experience true healing in a relationship if there is complete honesty. Yeah. You don't want to live a life. You don't want to be deceiving each other. You don't want to be deceiving yourself. Honesty is required for complete healing. And that means accepting what you've done, owning what you've done, so that you can seek forgiveness and then restoration. Mm -hmm. right. So thanks so much for joining us tonight for Love Life. We really appreciated having you here. We will probably be back next week. If not next week, then the following Wednesday. But certainly it's been great having you. We've been discussing this issue of entanglement. We will be back to discuss some more relationship mm -hmm. issues. Can you give them your numbers just in case? If there's something you want to ask me further, you want to seek our services as counselors, you want to find out more about what we do at Better Blends, you can give us a call on 239-7514 or you can drop us a line at betterblends at gmail.com. Better Blends as one word, B-E-T-T-E-R-B-L-E-N-D-S, betterblends at gmail.com and certainly we will reach out to help you. So thanks so much for joining us. Until we meet again, have a great evening, everyone. Bye.